So welcome back here. Let's take a look here at this next um, lesson, example one. So folklore suggests that when the creator of the game of chess showed his invention to the country's ruler, the ruler was highly impressed. He was so impressed, he told the inventor to name a prize of his choice. The inventor, being rather clever, said he could take a grain of rice, he would take a grain of rice on the first square of the chessboard, two grains of rice on the second square of the chessboard, four on the third square, eight on the fourth square, and so on, doubling the number of grains of rice for each successive square. The ruler was surprised, even a little offended, at such a modest prize, but he ordered his treasurer to count out the rice. Why is the ruler surprised? What makes him think the inventor requested a modest prize? So yeah, what do you guys think? Why do you think the ruler was surprised at the request of the um, inventor of chest? chess? <clears throat> and what makes him think the inventor requested a modest prize? Well, surprise, because, you know, at the start, the inventor only receives a few grains of rice. <clears throat> this seems to be a surprisingly small or modest request. <clears throat> the treasurer took more than a week to count the rice in the ruler's store, only to notify the ruler that it would take more rice than was available in the entire kingdom. Shortly thereafter, as the story goes, the inventor became the new king. Imagine the treasurer counting the needed rice for each of the 64 squares. We know that the first square is assigned to a single grain of rice, and each successive square is double the number of grains of rice of the former square. The table lists the first five assignments of grains of rice to squares on the board. How can we represent the grains of rice as exponential expressions? Okay, so... <clears throat> um... So he starts with one grain of rice. Then for this next one, it's one times two, right? That's two grains of rice. This one is one times two times two. <clears throat> this is one times two times two times two. Okay, because again, we start with the one, <clears throat> and then each time we multiply by an additional two. So this would be one times two times two times two times two. <clears throat> okay. So what happens, right? Well, we always have the one. And then how many twos do we have? Well, on the first square, we have no twos, right? On the second square, we have one two. On the third square, we have two twos. On the fourth square, we have three twos. On the fifth square, we have four twos. So we have one fewer two. Okay, we have one fewer two. Um, each time. So it'll be, or we, like, so we have four twos multiplied together here, but it was the fifth square. So in other words, it's two multiplied with itself n minus one times, where n is the number of the square. <clears throat> okay? It's not n, okay? Because if that were the case, you know, for example, if five, we, we would have five twos here, but we don't have five, we have four of them. So it's n take away one. So this is our exponential expression. Okay, so then for 62, it's going to be 1 times 2 to the 61 power. This will be 1 times 2 to the 62nd power. And this will be 1 times 2 to the 63rd power. Okay, you can try typing these in your calculator. I have a feeling, though, that your calculator won't be able to handle um, how many, how big that number is going to be. <clears throat> okay, so in this next example here, we'll take a look at comparing a function uh, that's linear, 2 times n, right, the slope is 2, the y-intercept would be, you know, plus 0 there, uh, versus an exponential function where it's 2 to the n power, and we'll see kind of, you know, some, we'll be able to compare, you know, the different kinds of uh, properties and behaviors of those two different functions. Okay, so I'll see you next video. <clears throat>